Hello, hi, <laughs> Dr. Brennan. First of all, I want to ask you, how hi. are you doing? Because you've been working so hard, and I know many of us have been around the clock, and how are you all holding up over there at the National Hurricane Center? <laughs> we're doing okay. You know, we're at the, the beginning. Well, it's been a, a long event already through the Caribbean, and now we're, we're starting to see the impacts here locally, and it's going to be another uh, long couple of days at least while this storm is affecting Florida and then on up into the southeastern U.S., but we're doing okay. All right, so I'm having some issues with my IFB, but I'm just going to ask questions. I'll let you answer, and we're just going to work it that way. This is live TV, so we just got to roll with the punches. But we've seen that yeah. it weakened as of the 11 a.m. advisory, Category 3 hurricane. But we don't want for uh, our viewers at home to think that because it weakened due to the interaction and the mountainous terrain here of Cuba, it is forecast to re-strengthen. And talk about what the implications are, especially for the keys. That's is expected to move towards the Keys as we head overnight into tomorrow morning. Right, you know, yeah, as you mentioned, the, the storm has the eye has been sort of moving right along the, the, these keys along the north coast of Cuba, and, and that interaction with the land has, has caused the maximum winds to weaken, the pressure to come up a little bit. But we're expecting Irma's center to move back out over the water later today. And it's going to have a good 12 or maybe even 18 hours over the warm waters of the Florida Straits. We're expecting it to re intensify some. But uh, it, and, and then we're that's going to bring the core of a major hurricane somewhere across the Florida Keys as we go uh, overnight tonight into Sunday morning and then on up into the, the west coast of Florida. So there's there's two life threatening hazards in the Keys. There's the winds from the core of the major hurricane and then there's the storm surge risk where we could see five to ten feet of storm surge inundation in the Keys. So anybody who's left themselves in the Florida Keys has really put their lives at risk uh, during the next 24 hours. All right, and we're hoping that everyone that was able to get out um, it was able to leave. And if not, there is still a small window of opportunity. I can hear you now. I got my IFB in, okay, so <laughs> there we go. Um, I did want to talk about the risk for some heavy rain and also flooding. We have a flood watch in place for South Florida yep. through Monday evening. And why is it that we're anticipating even more rain than before, possibly? Well, right, yeah, we're already starting to see these first big feeder bands come in off of the Atlantic, and that's, uh, you know, providing some, some quick showers and, and quick gusts of wind. But as the core of Irma moves closer, the rain intensity is going to pick up. And then with us being remaining on the southeast side of the track of Irma, the rainfall is going to continue because we're going to continue to be in that warm, moist uh, airflow on the south side that's going to draw up the warm, uh, moist waters out of the Caribbean and the Atlantic and is going to continue to fuel these rain bands that could linger over us for two or three days. And that's why we could see 8 to 15 inches of rain, isolated amounts as high as 20 inches. And we could also still see some storm surge flooding along the east coast, uh, up all the way up to North Miami Beach. We could see four to six feet of storm surge inundation. So uh, Irma is going to be producing a lot of water here in South Florida from the rain and the storm surge in the next uh, day or so for the surge and then extending on beyond that for the rainfall threat. It really is incredible how long we're going to have to contend with the impacts from Irma. Have we yeah. dealt with a hurricane like Irma that has led to us dealing with rain and storm surge and the threat for tropical storm force and hurricane force winds for this long, for this duration of time in the past? I don't recall. I think it's it's been quite a while, but some of the previous storms we've had, like uh, Andrew and Wilma that affected this area, were moving very quickly. So this is more going to be a long slog through the next uh, 36 to 48 hours. All right. Also wanted to talk to you about the risk of tornadoes. We did have a tornado warning earlier, and we're seeing these squalls moving in, and I want folks at home to know that they, they need to determine their safe room and make sure they get there. Now, how high is the risk for tornadoes as we head throughout the day today, tomorrow, and into Monday? Yeah, that risk will be there, especially through tonight, until the, until the center of Irma passes by our latitude, especially that we'll be in that favorable quadrant for tornadoes. So people want to be on the lookout for those tornado warnings if they're issued. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Brennan, Chief Hurricane Specialist at the National Hurricane Center.